Alright, what's up everybody? We're back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today's video, we're going to be previewing the round of 32, the second round of the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament, or March Madness. Uh, an amazing first round. And we're going to preview the second round here this week because I think it's going to be some more amazing games. Uh, yeah, we're going to get right into it. Uh, thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, all stuff like that. Uh, join the membership. Um, link to my Twitter, TikTok, stuff like that in the description down below. And uh, yeah, don't waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. All right, so we're going to start with Saturday's games. Uh, the first game we have, we have number two, Arizona, and number seven, Dayton. Down in the West region, Arizona, they won their first round game beating Long Beach State by 20. And Dayton won their game against number 10 Nevada in an amazing fashion, going on a 20 to nothing run, I think, or 17 nothing run middle of the game, to and just had an insane comeback to win this one. And they somehow are going to be playing this weekend. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting game. Uh, Dayton, of course, they're led by Deron Holmes as their leading guy, but uh, the fight they have. You saw that in the last game. The resilience they have, the fight they have was just insane to watch. Against Nevada, Nevada basically had it in the bag. It felt like Dane just stole their hearts, you know. He had a great game. Uh, Brett hit 15 points. He had five threes. Uh, it was just a really good all-around team effort. Um, forcing turnovers. Playing amazing defense as well to force that comeback like it, it was amazing to watch and then arizona uh, long beach state was giving us some problems in the first half i thought is this going to be the 15th seed to take out the number two but then they outscored long beach state 44 to 30 in the second half uh led by boswell who had 20 points and eight assists caleb blub had 18 11 and 5 even though he had a tough shooting night all five starters scoring double figures you know they shot well from three um they had a lot of assists it was really good to see but it's gonna be a very tough game it's gonna be grinded out i think if dayton could come in and kind of Bring the fight to Arizona. I think Dane has a really good chance in that one. Arizona doesn't look like an amazing team, but they still have really good players. Uh, in this one, I'm going to go with Arizona in this game, though. I'm going to go with Arizona. I like the team they have. I think Dane used a lot of energy, you know, when they came back and won that game against Nevada. But if they can come and bring the fight to Arizona early and punch them early in the face, maybe, you know, Dane can do some things. But I'm going to go with Arizona in this game. Next, we got Gonzaga. Kansas battle of four and five. Kansas uh, beat Sanford in that game. Even though Sanford had an amazing comeback, Kansas ended up winning that game. And then five Gonzaga, they took out McNeese State in the first round in dominant fashion. You know, which is very interesting. Yeah, Sanford or Sanford and McNeese State both lost their first round game, which was very surprising. Uh, my personal picks, but my March Madness bracket before this, I had Gonzaga beating McNeese State. I had Sanford beating Kansas. But because I was saying not both of them can have it because both of those guys are very popular upset picks. I thought at least one of them were going to win. I was I was very surprised to see that both those teams lost. But, you know, Kansas without Kevin McCullough Jr., their leading scorer. Uh, we don't know what his status is going to be for tomorrow's game against Gonzaga. If he's in there, that's going to be huge. But the way Gonzaga came out and played that game, man, I mean, Gonzaga dominated and went by over 20 points. Um, and then Watson almost had a triple-double, 13-13-9. Graham E.K. at 16 and 10 on perfect shooting. Greg at 12 points. Hickman at 11. Stromer off the bench at 10. Ryan Emhart at 9 assists. You know, um, they had two players at plus 35s. They shot 52% from the field, 48% from three. You know, at 22 assists, 38 rebounds. Like, they came out and dominated that game, you know, in Kansas. You know, Hunter Dickinson, not 100%, but he still came in and almost had a 20-20 game. You know, uh, K.J. Adams is really big. He had 20 points. Dewan Harris, of course, being the good point guard he is. Noah Timber or Nicholas Timberlake came in and put up 19 points. Johnny Furphy had 16 points. It was a good all-around team effort. They shot 60% from the field. Even though they did have a lot of both teams had a lot of turnovers in their games, but they ended up winning. And that was gonna be a very interesting one. I think again, of course, Kevin McCuller is the big X factor. I mean, he's their leading scorer. So if he's not in there again, it's gonna be really tough for Kansas, especially against a Gonzaga team that came out and kind of exceeded a lot of expectations in the first game. And the yeah, the way Gonzaga dominated that looked amazing. I'm going with Gonzaga in this game. Going because I think they, they know that they're kind of underdogs. A lot of people, again, picked them, picked Midlink State to win that game. That was one of the more popular upsets. It's not the same Gonzaga. People are saying it's not the same Gonzaga team that we're used to seeing. No more Drew Timmy and guys like that. It's a new team. They're not as great as the old team. I think they have that. And they came out yesterday and looked like they knew that. They looked like they knew people that kind of had a target on their backs a little bit. You know, people are downing them, so they're coming out with, with energy. And I like that, especially if Kevin McCullough Jr., if he doesn't play in this game, 
I'm going to go Gonzaga, but I think that's going to be a very, very good game. Next guy, 1-9, North Carolina, Michigan State, another rest region game. Meanwhile, Kansas and Gonzaga was Midwest, by the way. I didn't say that. But UNC, Michigan State. UNC won their game against Wagner, won by almost 30 in the first round game. Meanwhile, Michigan State got a good win, almost a 20-point win over 8 Mississippi State. I think it's going to be a very interesting game. Now, if you saw what I did, if you watched my Mark Madness Bracket video, which came out a couple days ago, I did a live stream of it. I made a video out of it. I picked Michigan State to win this game over North Carolina. I don't know. It's just something about Tom Izzo on March. And you saw they came out as a 9 seed against an 8 seed and dominated that game. They have a veteran type team. They got guys like Tyson Walker, A.J. Hogger, Malik Hall. that play some great basketball on Tom Izzo as well. But North Carolina's number one seed for a reason. They're really good. Came out made a statement game. R.J. Davis is amazing. They have Amanda ba- Baycott, um, Cormac Ryan. They have Ellie Cadeau. Like, they have really, really good players. I think it's going to be a big battle. Big battle. And I don't know. I just get a feeling that 1-1 one, one seed is going down early in this one. And for me, I picked as North Carolina. Am I riding with Michigan State over North Carolina? Still keeping it? Yes. I think Michigan State came out and made a big statement. It's eight, nine games, usually the toughest games to call. We saw it today, the Northwestern. Um, Ford Atlantic. I don't know why I couldn't think of their team name. Ford Atlantic game was good. Uh, well, Texas A&M did blow out Nebraska. But eight, nine games, usually supposed to be close. And Michigan State came out and played a great game. I think if someone could beat North Carolina in that region, I think it would be Michigan State. I think Tom Mitchell could put together a really good plan and win. So I'm going to go with Michigan State pulling off an upset. Next, we got 2-7. Iowa State, Washington State down in the East region. Iowa State, they came out on their first game, beat South Dakota State by 17. South Dakota State was in the game at some points, but Iowa State put them away. And then Washington State won an excellent game against number 10, Drake. They won by five points. They were down with about five minutes left, down by like eight, I want to say. They came back and won that game. I think this is going to be a very interesting one. Iowa State, of course, their defense is elite. You know, that's been one thing. They were the number one defense in the nation coming into the tournament. Then it shows they have a really good defense. You got guys like Tyrese Hunter is a baller. You know, but Washington State is a really good team. I mean, they've been ranked for the entirety of the year. They have a really good team down there, so I think it's going to be a very interesting game. Um, I'm going to go with Iowa State in this game, though. I think their defense is just going to be so great. I love their defense. I love what they do. And, yeah, I think their defense is going to come on and set the tone here. Washington State's going to have a hard time, you know, getting comfortable, and Iowa State's going to take this game. Next, we got Battle of Two Double-digit seeds, number 11, NC State, and number 14, Oakland, over in the South region. NC State came out, won their game against Texas Tech, 80-67. to um, After, again, having an insane ACC tournament, they come in, they keep the vibes going, and win that game. And then Oakland pulling off the upset of the tournament so far, taking out number 3, Kentucky, 80-76, to led by Jack Golke, who had 32 points, hit it 10 threes off the bench. What an insane performance they did. Shout out to Greg Campy. This is going to be a very fun game. Again, two battle two underdogs. You know, Oakland with Jack Golke. You know, um, NC State has kind of DJ Burns as kind of like their hero guy. I think it's going to be a very interesting one. Oakland, of course, they shoot a lot of threes. They get up a lot of threes, especially with Jack Golke running around. So it's going to be tough for NC State to kind of keep up with them. NC State's kind of riding on a high, winning five games in five days and winning last night. They're kind of going. They have energy. You know, uh, I like DJ Horn, DJ Burns. Middle Brooks off the bench came out and had 21 points randomly for NC State as well because it's March. You never know what's going to happen. DR also had a big game. So they got bigs down there, but so does Oakland. Uh, Townsend. Townsend for Oakland. He's their star player. He leads their team in points, rebounds, all the stuff like that. It's going to be interesting. Oakland was in foul trouble as well. I think it's going to be a very good game, you know. Um, very interesting one. Um, who am I going to pick? I'm still kind of going back and forth on who I'm going to pick in this game. I love Oakland's confidence, especially after the game. I love their confidence. love the way they play. NC State is riding on a high right now. So I'm going to go with – I'm going to go with Oakland. I'm going with Oakland. I think the 14 seed. I think we might have found our Cinderella, Oakland, you know. I think they're going to come out. Jack Oak, I don't know if he's going to hit 10 threes again, but I think he's going to be a problem for NC State, especially if they have tired legs. You know, especially because of how much workload they've been putting on them. I think Oakland's going to come out and see, like, okay, we won one game. Now I think we can, if we just beat Kentucky, we can beat NC State. If they're going to have that mindset and approach, they're going to come out. Greg Campy's going to put together a great game plan. I like the team. I like how they play. And they're going to come out and win this game. That's got 2 7. Tennessee, Texas down in the Midwest region. Tennessee in their first round game took advantage of St. Peter's, winning by 30 something points. They're very, very comfortably won that game. You know, um, you know Texas. They took advantage and beat Colorado State by 12 in a very ugly game, but they got the win. That's all that matters. So they're going to play tomorrow. That's going to be a very interesting game as well. 
Both those teams can play, kind of play tough. Both of those teams have kind of stars. Tennessee has Dalton Connect. Texas has Max Aismas, who was a Mount Madness legend a couple years ago. So that's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, Texas offense did look great last game against um, Colorado State. A lot of misses, especially early on in the game, is very, very tough. And Tennessee's going to be a lot better, and Tennessee's defense is a lot better. You know, And they have a guy in Dalton Connect who, if you let him get hot, he's going to get going. You know, Tennessee's a very tough team. I think it's going to be a very good game. I'm going to go with Tennessee in this game, though. I like how they have Dalton Connect. I like their veteran team. They have Zakai Ziegler. You know, Jay, like they have so many good players. And Texas does too. Texas has really good players as well. But I think if Texas can't get their offense going like they did last game, you know, then I think Tennessee could take advantage of that. And they have a way, way better team, a way better defense at Colorado State. So I'm going to go with te- Texas in this game. I'm sorry, Tennessee. Tennessee in this game. Next, got 314, Illinois and Duquesne down in the East region. Illinois, their first game, a little bit of scare of the first half, but then they came out in the second half, dominated Moorhead State, outscoring them 46 to 31. Terrence Shannon had a 26. Danger was an X Factor, 21 and 8 on 9 for 9 shooting off the bench. Domas got a triple double. They won their game. And then Duquesne, with their early upset, they tugged out BYU 71 67 in a very tough, grinded out game. I think it's going to be a very interesting battle. You know, Duquesne has a very tough, grinded out team. You know, they're underdogs that came out, had it. Daddy Grant is really, really good. They have Jimmy Clark III as well. They play a very tough style of basketball. And Illinois, their team that didn't get hot. I mean, Terrence Shannon Jr. is a walking bucket. He can go get you 25-30 if you need him to. Domas is really, really good. They have an offensive-oriented team, but their defense has not been amazing, even though they did lock in in the second half. Duquesne's got a team that, you know, in March can mug the game up and make things very, very tough for Illinois. There's a world where Duquesne can come in and make Illinois kind of uncomfortable early. And if Day Day Grant can get it going, like he did in the last game, Duquesne's gonna be a very Duquesne is a very, very tough out. Illinois is gonna be in for it, especially if their defense can't really lock in. I'm still kinda of going back and forth between who I'm gonna pick in this game and who I would predict to win in this game. Because again, I think Duquesne's got that type of team that they can make it make un- make other teams uncomfortable, especially a team like Illinois. You know? Uh so I'm gonna go I'm going with Duquesne. I'm riding with eleven. I'm riding with Duquesne to upset Illinois in this one. I could just see it happening. Last game of Saturday, we have three Creighton, 11 Oregon, down in the Midwest region again. Creighton got a comfortable win over Akron in their first game, winning by almost 20 points, uh, led by their all-star starting line of had double figures. Clark Burner had 23. Ty Alexander had 19. Um, Barry Shireman had 15 and 13. And then you have Oregon. They took out South Carolina very comfortably. J- Jermaine Cousinard had 40 points. Defali Dante had 23 points on 7 for 9 shooting. Very good game. I think this is going to be another very good game, and Crane is in for it. Crane has, you know, a tough opponent in Oregon. You know, Jermaine Cousinard coming in and getting Bucket DZ. I love him. Folly Dante off the bench. The Folly Dante, Ryan Cogburner battle is going to be something very, very interesting to see. Crane probably has a better overall round team, but Oregon's got the star players in Cousinard and Dal- in, in Folly Dante. Even at Jack- Jackson Shellsad, you know, who didn't even have a really good first game, but he has the potential to do it. Uh, Oregon comes in. They, their defense is amazing. You know, their defense is very unique. They play. They go from zone to man very, very easily and throw defensive coverages at you like like nothing. So Crane's gonna be in for a tough, tough battle. And I think I'm gonna ride with another eleven. I think I'm gonna ride with Oregon. I think I'm gonna ride with Oregon in this one. Another eleven seed. I don't know. I just really love the star power that they have. I love that they can throw different defenses at you. And even though I really like Crane as a whole team, and in my real March Madness bracket before this, I picked Crane to go to the Final Four. But I don't know. I could just see Oregon has that type of team. Oregon's got a team that could definitely make a big, big run, especially if Cousin Arden and Dante can keep playing out of the way they've been playing. They're going to be a tough out. So I'm going to go with Oregon on an upset, man. I'm believing in the 11s, apparently. And now we're going to go into Sunday's games. First game we got on Sunday is Colorado Marquette. Co- Marquette beating two, Colorado 10 out in the South region. Marquette, they won their game against 15 Western Kentucky. By over 20 points which is very interesting because western kentucky came out and you know made it a game in the first half they're actually up at seven going at halftime but then marquette comes out outscores them 51 26 comes out with great energy in the second half and they take the win here colorado played an amazing game against florida a uh, high scoring game they won 102 to 100 kj simpson hit a game winning jumper but yeah all five starters scoring double figures it was a very interesting game and now they play against each other colorado's got a good team man the first four team uh, they came out. They won the Pac-12 championship. They got KJ Simpson, who you saw yesterday as a dog. Uh, Eddie Lampkin is going to be big in this game as well. Down low at the battle team, him and Oso Iguodaro. It's going to be very interesting. 
Um, they got Cody Williams, who didn't have a great game yesterday, but he has potential to. Um, Tristan De Silva, I really like as well. So they, they got like Colorado's got a really really good team. You know, they play fast. Their offense was really good yesterday, even though they weren't, weren't really an amazing offensive team. But they're doing that. And then Marquette obviously has a great team. Tyler Kolek is back. And Tyler Kolek came back in a great way. Cam Jones as well came off a heater. He had 28 points. He was huge in that game. I really like Marquette's team all around. I think it's going to be a very interesting one. I think Colorado is going to give Marquette a battle. But ultimately, I'm going to end up picking Marquette in this game. I just feel like their team is too good, even though Colorado, again, has is going to have a chance, especially if they keep that offense going like they did yesterday. Then it's going to be very interesting. But Marquette, I love the way Tyler Kolek came out. And if Cam Jones is still on a heater, they're going to be a very tough team to take out that's got one eight purdue taking on eight utah state out in the midwest region purdue they won their game is grambling won by almost 20 points zach Eady had a 30 point 20 rebound performance with three blocks as well Braden smith also had a double double with 11 and 10 assists and then you got utah state taking out tcu very comfortably you know led by ian martinez at 21 johnson at 19 great also at 13 uh Derek brown had or darius brown had a um, double double 10 points 10 assists uh, it's going to be a very interesting one. In my original bracket, I picked Utah State to take out Purdue. And I think they have a good chance. I mean, the way Utah State kind of dominated last night was very interesting to me. Didn't expect that. I thought it was going to be a very, very good one. But Utah State came out, especially in the second half. I scored them 45-35. to 35. Looking at some of the stats, they shot 55% for the field. Only missed one free throw. Forced 13 turnovers. Had nine more assists. You know, so that was big. Also, thing, though. They gave up a lot of rebounds. They lost the rebounding battle by a lot, and you're going up against a 7 for 4 center who just came off a 21-rebound game. It's going to be very, very tough. But Utah State has a chance, I think, in this game. Utah State has a really, really good chance. Am I going to go back on my prediction and pick Purdue instead? I really want to, but, again, I have this thing again about Purdue, man, that I don't, I don't really know. I just can't really trust them a whole lot when it comes to tournament time, you know. But Utah, Utah State's got a very good solid shot, but I really like Purdue. You know, I'm keeping it. I'm going per Utah State over Purdue. I think Utah State gets Purdue out. I think it's going to be a very interesting game, a tough one. I think if Utah State could keep up the offense like they did last yesterday, if Darius Brown can have another really good game where he controls the pace, great also board definitely needs to have a big game as well. Uh, Ian Martinez, if he can see, keep bring that energy, you know, it's going to be very, very tough to beat Purdue because Purdue, again, is a really good team. I respect them, but I'm going to go with Utah State in this game. Next guy, 412, Duke versus James Madison out in the South region. Duke took care of Vermont, even though it was a really good game for Vermont. Credit to them, they stayed in it for a lot of it, but then Duke at the end, they outscored to Vermont 30 to 18 in the second half and won their game 64 47. And then James Madison pulls off the upset, defeating number five, Wisconsin, by 11. It was a very, very good game for them as well. And now this is going to be an interesting one. In my original bracket, I had James Madison upsetting Duke. And I'm going to keep it. I really like James Madison, especially yesterday they came out. And they kind of were in control of the game for, like, all of it. They were really in control of the game. Uh, TJ Biggerstaff had a really, really good start. Uh, they have Noah Friedel. Uh They got Wood and Terrence Edwards. I really like Terrence Edwards as well. It's just a very efficient offense. They just know what, they know what their team is. They know what their strengths are and stuff. And they just do it. You know, they got to the free throw line 30 times. They forced 19 turnovers. You know, they had 14 steals in this game. Even though a three-point shot wasn't really falling a whole lot. Still, like, they are just a really, like they said yesterday on the broadcast, still at the end, it was like it's a well, well old machine, and that's kind of what it is against Duke. Even though Duke, you know, they're going to need Kyle Filipowski to show because Kyle, Kyle Filipowski didn't really do much yesterday um, in the Vermont game, but they still got the win because the role players, the role players are going to keep have to keep on the gas. But I think James Madison is a team that really could go on a big run. So I'm going to go with James Madison taking out Duke. Next got 3-6 Baylor Clemson out in the West region. Baylor, they took care of business. Uh, they beat Colgate by 25. Uh, they put up 92 points. It was crazy. They shot 58% for the field, 53% from three. They just absolutely dominated in the offensive end. And then Clemson took out New Mexico by over 20 points, which is interesting because New Mexico, for me, in my original bracket, I had New Mexico in the Final Four. <laughs> I had them making a Cinderella run, but Clemson came out and dominated. Uh, Chase Hunter had 31 and 6 assists. Uh, Chef, Shefflin had 16 and 12. PJ Hall had 14. Uh, they were just, they came out and just stepped on New Mexico's necks early, which is interesting. And now it's going to be an interesting game. Clemson has a more of an all around attack, you know, but Baylor, their offense is just so efficient. And Scott Drew, they said on the broadcast yesterday, but Scott Drew said this is probably his best offensive team he's ever had, which is very interesting because you got Kobe Walter out there, uh, Jalen Bridges as well, who had a really good game. Those two are kind of 
setting the tone. And then you got yeah, Ray J. Dennis, you have Nunn, Missy. You even had guys off the bench that came in and put up some stuff. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Baylor in this game. I'm going to go Baylor. I love the offense they play with. You know, I like their team all around. They got some – they can get hot. You know, they get hot, and, you know, defensively they're going to try to lock in. They got big men. They got guards for you. They got it all. Baylor's a very tough out, so I'm going to go Baylor over Clemson. Next got 412, Alabama and Grand Canyon also in the rest region. Alabama took care of Charleston, put up over 100 points. They won by 13. Mark Sears had an easy 30 points in this game. Very interesting for Alabama. And then you got Grand Canyon who pulled off the upset, defeating number five, St. Mary's by nine. Time Grant Foster had 22 points in this game. This is going to be a very good game. I think it's going to be a very good game. Alabama, of course, they have a very explosive offense. Uh, again, put up 109 points yesterday. Their offense, one of the best in the nation. NATO knows how to do it. But they gave up 96 points to Charleston as well. It was a 13-point win. We know their defense get, get kind of suspect. And that's against Grand Canyon, that's not a thing you want. Grand Canyon's a team. They have a length. They have athleticism. You know, uh, Their defense is really, really nice. They get to the free throw line a whole lot. They got 36 free throw attempts. Last night, they have a guy in time, Grant Foster, who is a star. Uh, Gabe McLaughlin as well down low. It's going to be very interesting on both ends. Like, Grand Canyon has a team, man. Grand Canyon has a really, really good team. Really like what Grand Canyon did yesterday. And I think Grand Canyon has a really good shot against Alabama, especially if Alabama's defense can't come to show up. Like, Grand Canyon could come in. And if it's going to come down to who can get stops at the end, I probably believe more in Grand Canyon and the length and versatility they have than Alabama. So I'm going to go Grand Canyon. I'm going to go Grand Canyon. I'm believing in the 12s. Grand Canyon, I'm going to go with the upset. I'm going to go Grand Canyon gets the upset of Alabama. This got one night. UConn, Northwestern out in the East Region. UConn took care of business to beat Stenson by almost 40 points. They put up 91, uh, just a thrashing of them. And then Northwestern took out Florida Atlantic in overtime. They won by 12. Very good game. Led by Ryan Langborg, who had 27. Bob Bowie had 22. Bork Barnheiser had 13 and 10. Very good Northwestern game. Uh, but, yeah, UConn came out yesterday and showed at the world, hey, like we're here. Beast, I mean, it was Stetson, but they won by 40. They were up by, like, 35 for most of the game. You know, but Northwestern is going to be a very interesting team. Northwestern, they have explosiveness. They have a guy in Boo Booey who could come in and be a star for them, especially if, if they have Ryan Langbird and Brooks Bruneiser play like they did last night. It's going to be very interesting. But UConn is just so tough. I, I can't pick against UConn in this one, so I'm going UConn. But I think Northwestern can give them a decent battle. I think Northwestern has the explosiveness and the guard play, you know, to give them a decent battle. But at the end, I think UConn's going to come out on top. We got another one seed in action. Number one, Houston taking on number nine, Texas A&M out in the south region. Houston took care of business. They beat Longwood by 40, um, only allowing 46 points. They put up. They only allowed 16 points in the first half. Very interesting. And then Texas A&M beat up Nebraska, winning by almost 20 points. Wade Taylor, that three players score over 20 points. They put up 98. This is going to be a very solid game. I think Texas A&M, they have the explosiveness. A guy in Wade Taylor, the fourth who uh, is a bucket getter, you know. Uh, and then you also have Tyrese Radford, the guards. But then uh, Obas Obeski, Manny Obeski came out last night and was dominant. Texas A&M, not really a three-point shooting team. But last night, you know, the three-point shot was hot for them. Uh, can they keep it going, though, against a very tough Houston team who we saw their defense is elite, you know. So it's going to be a very hard day for Wade Taylor and Tyrese Radford against, you know, Jamal Shedd and them. It's going to be very tough. I'm going to go with Houston in this game. I'm going to Houston. Um, I just don't know if I can rely on Texas A&M to hit the three ball like they did last night, you know. And the way Texas A&M is going to have to win this game is Wade Taylor and Tyrese Rafford are going to have to come out and have to do it against a very decent, solid defense, or they're going to need a, an X-Factor, kind of like what Obit Baski was last night. Going to need an X-Factor, and they're going to need to crash the glass, you know, and just get their hit their open shots when they get them because they're not going to get a lot of easy ones. You know, that's the only way they can win that game. And the final game we have with the sweet, round of 32 5-13, San Diego State versus Yale out in the East Region. San Diego State won a really good one against UAB. You know, they were up in control most of the game until the second half UAB came out, you know, and kind of, you know, pushed them. But SDSU came out with the win. Jalen D, 32-8 and eight on 11 for 18 shooting. He was He's just an absolute monster. And then Yale pulled off a huge upset, taking out number four Auburn um, by, what was it, two points. Uh, Polakaitis. John Polakaitis, 28 points, hit six three-pointers in this game. Just an insane game from Yale. And now it's going to be a very interesting one. San Diego State, their team has really more grit and grind defense, and they have Jaden Ledee. Jaden Ledee is an absolute monster down low. You know, So if he can have another big game, that will be interesting. But for Yale, they're going to need a lot. They're going to need John Polakaitis to have another big game. Danny Wolf, who was one of their bigger guys, um, they can't get him in foul trouble. 
you know, they do have Jaden Liddy down there who can get Danny Wolf in foul trouble. We'll see what happens there. But I'm going San Diego State in this game. Uh, I just think their defense is going to be really tough for Yale, even though they just took out Auburn. But I don't know. They're going to have to, Yale's going to have to catch some more magic in a bottle, you know, which is March. So some people get superpowers in March, just like Polakaitis did last night. But San Diego State, I think they're just too tough of a team for Yale. They're going to be too physical with them. And I don't know if Yale can do it twice in a row. So I'm going to go with San Diego State in this game. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, let me know how you're feeling about March Madness. What you think is going to happen in the round of 32. All the stuff like that in the comments down below. Once again, if you like the content, consider subscribing. Like, turn notifications, all stuff like that. I really appreciate it. Really upset a lot. Join the membership. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.